Welcome back and it's time for that discussion on the money factor in relationships and joining us in studio is Cynthia Waga who will, I will allow to introduce herself. Welcome Cynthia. Thank you so much uh, Tess. Uh, my name is Cynthia Waga and I'm a finance lecturer at uh, the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. Married uh, to one man and uh, a mother of two children. Thank you for coming and I see your uh, able husband is also here along with you. Yeah. Maybe let's start from uh, the dating scene because that is where these relationships begin. Yeah. And at the dating scene we see that uh, there are many things that people expect when they have entered into a relationship. People have different expectations. There are people who believe that the relationship should be driven by money. But help us understand at what point when people have now started dating, do you start revealing details about your financial uh, capacity or status? Uh, there's no specific uh, recommended time at which an individual should be able to reveal the information. So the information that you want to reveal, especially your financial information, depends on the weight of which you take that kind of information because the amount of information cannot be released all at once. Say something like uh, your salary. You cannot just enter the first date and you want to explain and you know reveal that this is the much that I earn. So there are specific details that you will be releasing but somehow in doses, slowly. So as the relationship goes into a much more committed kind of a relationship, that is when now you can release the kind of information that you feel comfortable to and the ones that you feel like they are more weighty especially if you reach a point where now you are committed and you know it's going to lead to marriage, then you can be able to release some information. But otherwise, release it, but slowly and not pop everything at a go. And you just tell them, this is the number, the amount of debt that I have, this is how much I earn, this is how much I've saved, you know. You don't just release it that way. So in a relationship, let it go on and the conversation should be part and parcel of the relationship. And it's not like we are only going to talk money only because you are relating, you want to know this person, you'd want to know who they are. And as you relate, that is when now you are able to release as uh, information when needed. And when you feel I am comfortable to explain myself. Yeah. When it comes to going out mm -hmm. during the dating season, I see uh, a lot of women, or let me just say most women, mm -hmm. expect that the man will pay the bill. Uh, what do you think about that? Is it something that is um, a fair expectation on the side of women? I don't think that it is fair enough, especially for the man, as long as both of you are making money. Why should one person shoulder the burden of everything? So yes, there's expectation that the man will be the provider when you get married, but when you are dating, it should also be from both sides. I will spend money on the man that I love and I'm working towards a marriage uh, relationship to, with as well as he is spending money on me so that it's not one-sided because sometimes we are in a generation where the boy child feels like the, if the girl child is too empowered and they have the money so I will also be waiting for the girl child always to be paying maybe for the meals and all the dates so it should be a mutual relationship so that my money can be used, your money can also be used. But then now the expectations and the amounts is what would vary. Because I will not expect that one individual will be catering, you know, uh, looking after you, paying all the bills, feeding you, you know. You really have to also put boundaries so yeah. that you are not so dependent on the other person mm -hmm. just because you are dating. I know of people who money is a factor when it comes to even choosing a, a partner. Yeah. Do you think that's a healthy measure mm -hmm. to say, unless he drives, unless he takes me to such restaurants? What do you say, what's your take? Uh, my take is that money should not be a factor in relationship. It should not be the core business that someone is looking for. Yes, I know some people would be writing on their list of uh, the characteristics and one of them would not be looking at who the person you are dating or who the person you are looking for to date and enter into marriage with. You are just thinking of, you know, what they own. 
And that is a wrong perception because the moment you enter into marriage and that job is gone and that source of income is gone, will you now pack your stuff and go? So money should not be the core factor. Money is just a medium of exchange. And so you just do not go thinking that that is the number one factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'm um, thinking what will be the measure then in terms of someone who is pursuing, we are looking at this, mm -hmm. the angle from the man's side, mm -hmm. who is pursuing a lady mm -hmm. and he doesn't have a job. Mm -hmm. What would you, would you think, uh, what do you think uh, should women uh, or girls look at it as a, as a point of let me help him grow? Mm -hmm. Because there are people who have invested mm -hmm. and uh, there are women who have actually taken care mm -hmm. of uh, young men out here but they have later on left them, some of them with loans, yeah. to the extent of, I need a loan to be able to do a certain project, could you please assist me? Mm -hmm. And I believe there are many women out here who have big hearts and they will assist somebody. But at the end of the day, you find that a man, uh, I've had cases that they ran away with the money and now a, a lady is left paying yeah. for the bill. So how, what is the criteria before, really? Before marriage, yeah. then, uh, I think as a lady, you need to have your threshold of how much you can give out and how much support you can give to a man because otherwise you'll be taken for granted. As I said earlier, there's a generation of men who like being kept. And so you really have to think wisely before you enter into a relationship. Yes, he might not have a job, but what, what is in his mind concerning not having that job? Is he lazing around? Is he trying to look for anything somehow to get money? Is he hardworking? Those are some of the things that you look for rather than just, you know, banish the person and say you are no longer in my list because you don't have an income. They will get an income and things might turn around. But then you as a lady, you need to also to have a threshold. You cannot be paying all the, when you go out for a debt. You cannot pay, you know, support to an extent that you're doing long-term investments in this man. Because you really have to ask yourself, is this what I want to do also when I get into marriage throughout? Because some, you'll, it will start when you are dating and it will continue on. And that's what is leading to so many marriages failing where someone is saying, I've been sing single married. I am married, but I am single <laughs> because I've been doing everything. Yeah. But you started it early. Yeah. So you really have to try and check the balance so that when you are giving out money, yes, it's okay to assist once in a while, but not always. And you also don't have to be taken to somewhere where there's, you have to use a lot of money. You can always go to a kibanda somewhere, take soda and uh, kangumu, <laughs> and still feel, you know, yeah. that uh, you appreciate the yeah. effort that that man has done. Yeah. yeah. Well, the soda in Kangumu part may not go, so, go down so well with uh, some people, yeah. but I, I get your point. Yeah. So where should, uh, when should money talks be involved in the relationship at the dating season? Is it when uh, maybe after six months mm -hmm. or when you're engaged? When mm -hmm. should somebody know, uh, I earn this amount of money mm -hmm. so that now as we are planning uh, let's say this relationship now is getting serious. Mm -hmm. At which point do you feel that it is safe to reveal information of your income, mm -hmm. um, having in mind that you're now almost getting married? When you're almost getting married and you are committed, in a committed relationship that you see things are going in, in a way that there's a wedding coming up, then you can reveal. You can reveal information that, Though the money talks, we realize that most of the people who date rarely talk about money. You know, you talk about the romance part and assume that as much as, you know, we are dating, we will talk about money when we get in there. Then you realize that some of these conversations concerning money, which are very helpful, you need to have conversation concerning their savings, how someone has been spending, you know, how much debt do they have? Because when you are entering in into marriage, it is our debt. It is now no longer yours because you borrowed a loan. So you need to understand and have conversation or even the aspect of money personality so that it is a conversation, but you can also pick from the relationship. As you go on, you can be able to understand and know that this person spends a lot but does not save. It doesn't have to be, you know, some people talk verbally, but there are those 
conversations that somehow they are nonverbal and you can be able to get the message that this person is in this kind of a personality where they spend more than they save or alternatively they avoid making money or even they avoid spending money or they are, you know, they are people who are not into investing. So somehow this uh, conversation should be there as much as sometimes it is not uh, a very comfortable conversation. Yeah. You've mentioned money uh, personalities. Mm -hmm. What are these personalities about to help us delve a bit deeper into mm -hmm. understanding that? Okay, so money personality is um, how you relate with money. There's what we refer to as money language. We grow up, we have a relationship with money as we go on in life. The first time you met money, you were given maybe pocket money in high school. How did you spend it? Or even when you are at home, how did your parents used to talk about money? Or you would go and ask them for something, there's no money. And you know, within your mind, you always know there is no money. You live with a scarcity mentality or there was money to be given to you. You know, it's like it is a right for me to be given the money. So somehow it, that builds up with time and it uh, influences your personality. And this personality is specifically geared now towards money. So how you relate with money and, and uh, somehow leads to the money personality. The same way we have these other personalities. But even the temperaments could affect, your past experiences could affect and ensure or make you go in such a way in how you are handling money. So you either want to save. Why? Because there was a time that there was no money. And you just feel like, I need to save to have financial security. And sometimes it can go to an excess where now you become a hoarder. There are instances where you knew money was to be spent. You only live once. once. <laughs> and so you find someone, because of experiences and many other factors that has affected how they relate with money, whenever they get money, they say money talks. And it talks and it tells them, you need to buy this. This is the latest. You know, you even become a big spender and not just spending. And some people, when they get that money, they also spend on the basis of trying to get an emotional attachment. You know, retail therapy. You just go and buy to feel nice. Not because you really need whatever you are buying, mm -hmm. but just to make you feel like mm -hmm. I've done something. So there are such uh, money personalities. Yeah. I, now as we explore the money personalities, mm -hmm. there is this aspect of weddings. Now just before you get into, <laughs> get into marriage, yeah. and weddings have been known to be a costly affair where some people say, uh, I want this and that, I want mm -hmm. a limousine, mm -hmm. I want a gown of a half a million, mm -hmm. you know. And I wanted us to just understand what is a healthy way of uh, budgeting for uh, an expense for, for, such a, for something like a wedding. Do mm -hmm. we have to do our $2 million uh, wedding. wedding to show the, shock the town, mm -hmm. you know, tell them that uh, we, have, we are the latest wedding, the most yeah. expensive in the year, wedding of the year. Yeah, you what want some, to outdo. <laughs> you want to outdo <laughs> someone else. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not even outdoing, or sometimes it's just a childhood dream mm -hmm. where you saw a, a particular image of a dress and you want mm -hmm. to live up to a certain dream. Where do we balance in uh, making a wedding memorable mm -hmm. and at the same time sticking to a budget that will not leave uh, people in debt? Yeah. Later on, yeah. I think uh, when it comes to a wedding, a wedding is a one-day affair. And when you come to the realization that it is just a one-day thing, and you ask yourself, how much will I spend for one day in preparation for a marriage journey? Trying to separate the wedding and the marriage journey. That is where now the starting point should be. So that as you spend, ask yourself, how much do we have for the two of us to live on? What will we eat the following day? After the honeymoon, we come back and there is debt left, right, and center. It's about the relationship more than just a day. That is why now the issue of money personality also comes in, even when you are dating, so that you know my money personality, you know your, your partner's money personality. So that when now you are thinking about planning for a wedding, we can somehow have a conversation and balance there is need for a balance because after everybody else has gone, after the glamour, after leaving that dream wedding that you really wanted, mm -hmm. there is reality mm. that you need breakfast 
on the following day. There is rent to be paid. You know, there are so many other things. And maybe one of you is not even working, but the fact that friends came in, do you have to get all the money from friends? How much can the two of you afford? If you cannot afford the one million wedding, there's really no need of you doing that big wedding because the wedding can be, still be blessed. God will still bless the wedding. I believe in a wedding where it is more of the presence of God coming in, more of blessings, more of the experience, the joy and the atmosphere than the material stuff. So trying to come up with that balance is very important. If you can afford and still have a life that you will live comfortably, that's okay. But if you cannot afford and you are waiting for people to, you know, support you, and it is like if they do not support, they are no longer friends, no. That is too much expectations, and uh, that will not work on well. Because there are marriages that normally fail almost immediately because of such. You did this wedding, the dowry you even went to pay was even... Mm. You know, <laughs> actually, I wanted to come back. Yeah. I, I've realized I've skipped the dowry part yeah. where some people have been asked for amounts of money mm -hmm. and the man just disappears. Mm -hmm. He says, Let me consult. <laughs> and they go. And they disappear yeah. because the amount they've been asked. You know, mm -hmm. this girl has a master's, mm -hmm. she's doing her PhD. Mm -hmm. So you have to bring a million shillings on the table so that we can talk. What do you think? And those are foundations. What can, what <laughs> would you uh, advise? Um, Parents. Maybe a young person or even mm. parents mm. who are, are going through such a situation and they are wondering, what do I do? How can I help my child? Or what, how can I help my, my fiancé mm -hmm. to be able to meet this need? Yeah, because I think within the African culture, we are used to, you know, we need to pay dowry uh, to the lady's side. But that has been changing over time. Though there are some that would still call for very high amounts of money when you know very well the guy is not in a position to do that. And I believe in a, I'm of the school of thought that dowry doesn't really end because dowry is basically an appreciation. So there's no figure that you can really put on the lady, even if they are learned to what extent or even if they have not even gone to school. This is someone you are taking. Mm. And the appreciation should go on and on and on. And it doesn't have to be, you know, in monetary form all through. So if as much as possible, parents should try as much as possible to tone down the expectations, especially for people who are just starting off life. Mm -hmm. There's a time that they will come and appreciate you even much better because the main essence of a marriage is the relationship and it should not be focused on money. Yeah. Well said. Well, now after the wedding, mm -hmm. uh, many say that now, especially for some women, my money is my is money. my money is and your money, money is our money <laughs> mm -hmm. so it means that the man needs to bring his money on the mm -hmm. table but uh, mine mm -hmm. i can do whatever i want with it what's your opinion on that uh, my opinion is that uh, that is being selfish mm -hmm. as a lady you have gone to school you have worked really hard and uh, trying to imagine that you start making money and it only becomes yours, that is very mm. selfish. Because when you're talking of a marriage, you're talking of an institution that brings people together. Mm. And it, the two are becoming one. Yeah, then so the oneness yeah. is not just in mm. bed. Mm -hmm. The oneness should be in our purpose, our focus, our goals, and including money. You cannot, you know, money is a medium of exchange, but it is what we transact with every single day. When you want to go to work, you have to think, which means am I taking? It will cost you money. When you are seated and you are watching TV, you are paying. You know, there's electricity, there's money is everywhere. So you cannot detach money from the relationship. But then you can use that money to enhance the relationship. And so there's nothing like my money is mine and his money is ours. It should be a joint effort towards a common goal and not mine and his. What about the issue of joint accounts? Mm -hmm. Is it something that uh, you will say is, is, a, is healthy given um, the situation? Sometimes someone might go away with the money, <laughs> clear the account, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's quite a challenge, but mm -hmm. I believe that money is supposed to, uh, mm -hmm. you're also supposed to marry your money. Mm -hmm. Then how do you marry your money in a manner that you can um, uh, be comfortable and trust mm -hmm. the other person? I think now you'll still go back to the money languages and money real, uh, personalities that we had talked on earlier on. Mm -hmm. Because when you want to merge money, there's no one 
formula that works best for everybody. We are different, and for some, they will feel like if I do not explain myself every other time when I am spending, I feel I am being dishonest. And you want to put the money together so that when we are spending, you know what I'm spending on. But there are those ones who will feel like I still need some freedom to some extent. But the most important thing is there's no formula whether to have a single joint account or separate accounts. There are principles that guide how you merge your money, which entails transparency, which entails being honest, open, and accountable. Unfortunately, imagine <laughs> we are out of time. time okay. And I think we want to con uh, continue this conversation. God willing, next week, if uh, you will be available, maybe mm -hmm. this time you can come mm -hmm. with your husband and so that we can also have the other uh, perspective of the male, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps with your permission, to, of course. But we will conclude there. I just want you to give us um, a parting shot concerning... Uh, finances, especially in relationships. Just give us your parting mm -hmm. shot, especially as a financial uh, lecturer. Okay. What would you say? Okay, I would say for those that are still dating and uh, they are relating, as uh, you discover each other over time, try as much as possible to ask yourself, am I willing to marry my pocket? Am I willing to marry my pocket to this person? Mm -hmm. If you are not, please do not enter into the marriage relationship. Do not even go ahead. And if you feel like the man's money personality doesn't really match yours or is not compatible because we will have different money personalities and obviously opposite attracts. A saver would really like, they don't want to spend, but they will fall in love with a spender because a spender will spoil them and they'll feel like they are covering, you know, they are, mm -hmm. the thing that they are really missing. Mm -hmm. And so if you feel like it is an advantage, but when now you get married and you feel like I will not be able to tolerate this person spending all my money, you know, buying big things, buying a Mercedes where a Toyota can still take me, you know, if you feel like, please do not go ahead with that marriage, just stay on. Mm -hmm. And for those who are married, as we always say, if your pocket is not married, you're not yet married. Wow. Yeah. What a, end, what a way to uh, uh, pause the relationship for today, uh, the discussion for today. Indeed, I feel like it's a conversation that we can take forward. Mm -hmm. And for you, who, if you're longing for more, join us next Thursday for the continuation of this conversation, God willing.